Hello comrades and welcome back to the Ushanka show! Uh, we just had uh, several big uh, Russian holidays, Soviet holidays uh, went by and if you don't live in Russia you probably even didn't notice them but we had May 1st which is International Day of Labor Solidarity and I believe that holiday originated from Chicago in 1800s I believe there used to be a big um, manifestation of workers and it became International Days or Workers Solidarity and also uh, May 9 it's a huge huge holiday uh, victory day uh, for the Soviet Union in the war against uh, Nazi Germany and I don't know if you're aware in Soviet Union we have kind of like two separate wars uh, which relates to World War II. There's a World War II and then there's a Great Patriotic War. So war between uh, Soviet Union and Germany it's a Great Patriotic War and it starts on June 22nd and ends in May 9. So June 22nd 1941 and May 9, 1945. The rest of the war it's the World War II. So it's kind of what happened um, for the Soviet historian they separated those two events for some reason. But today I would like to answer for the question of one of the viewers and the question was pretty simple. Was that anything positive about life in Soviet Union? And the answer is yes, of course uh, we had some positive things um, and I would like to talk uh, some a little bit about it. Uh, so first of all uh, you need to know that I was born in 1971 so I had 20 years of life in USSR so USSR officially ended its life in 1991 when I was 20 so my childhood was a happy Soviet childhood and a lot of positive things and positive memories and comes from my memories of being as a child in Soviet Union so first thing I can think of is of course we had free education, uh, just like here in America, I know, like a regular school, high school, it was all free. And also, we had free college education. We also had uh, free health care. And I know I probably start sounding like Bernie Sanders, free this, free that, but that's how it was in Soviet Union. And of course, we need to understand, and everyone needs to understand, there's no such a thing like a free something someone had to pay for it. So in case you know here uh, the idea like Bernie Sanders that higher taxes on Wall Street banks and stuff like that will pay for uh, education for every American. Uh, in Soviet Union I cannot tell you where the money were coming from but I bet just because everyone was getting such a small salary we weren't paid much probably all that cash was uh, going into the system of free education and free health care. Uh, speaking of education, there are some catches uh, for that system. It's uh, free for people who are smart enough. So you don't just like finish high school like okay I'm ready to go to the university and you just join any college uh, wherever you want to join. was not the case. Uh, first of all, uh, if you want to go to college, you know, you need to pass the entry test, like exam. Like for example, when I uh, was uh, come, going to Kiev Polytechnical Institute, uh, we had test in math, we had test in physics, and we had test in Russian literature. And for every spot in that college, uh, so for example, say it was two, they accept every year 2,000 students. There were about 4,000 people who wanted to be a student of that specific college. So I had to compete against, well even more than that because uh, I had to compete against other guys to get in. So I had to score high enough uh, to get in the college. So it was free college, we'll call it for smart people, okay? It wasn't just taking anyone like here in America, as long as you have money you can join pretty much any college. Of course we're not talking about those elite colleges like Yale and Ivy League, all those guys. But regular college, as long as you have money, 
uh, they will happily take you in because you're paying for it. Uh, if we talk about healthcare, it was free but was not really good quality and also if you go for anything uh, to the hospital or just like uh, if you have a small issue you know you need to visit dentist it's always in one building like it wasn't a hospital but like we call it balnitsa so if any issues you go there first and then hospitals were separate things so you don't just go and have a doctor in office all the doctors were in one big building which was covering like in my case specific area of kiev so if you go to visit dentist a pediatrician anyone you go to that specific uh, spot and uh, since there was no computer systems, no scheduling, it's pretty much you show up and there's already 20 pe people or 10 people in line. You ask who is the last in the line and then you sit for hour, two hours, three hours to get admitted so doctor can check you out. So generally, uh, you know, it didn't cost us anything but time uh, to get anything done, anything checked. You you know your tooth pulled out or anything like that you know you're going to spend a lot of time sitting on the bench uh, in a hospital just to get service and another thing is you need to think about it and uh, consider that one of the problem when everything is free that means that doctors don't get compensated for their work accordingly to their quals or talents so if for example one doctor is really good he can um, figure out things quick give you the right uh, uh, pills we'll say or whatever and the next door is a guy who is lazy and he may be also only take care of 10 people versus 20 you do you all get paid the same and I think that was the main problem for people who like hard driven you know always trying to reach the top it kind of kills the whole initiative to be good to be excellent to be perfect because the guy next to you does so so job and he gets paid exactly same as you do and i think it's affected the whole country the whole soviet union doctors uh well teachers uh but any profession you know a lot of people who reach the top they're extremely maybe you could call egoistic you know they they proud of themselves they try their best and they want to be awarded and in soviet union they might tap you on the shoulder say good job maybe they'll put your picture on the board that says this is our best doctors or this is our best teachers and your picture will be there but financially you won't get compensated and it kind of kills the whole initiative to be a really good worker so I think one of the reasons why Soviet Union always had problems uh, competing like economy versus economy America or Germany versus Soviet Union because no one tried really hard we had really low productivity because there was no initiative to work hard even our famous um, comedian uh, one said that what the point for me to make a really good bike you know assemble a really good bike when next to me a guy does a really lousy job assembling the bike and down the line the guy doesn't do anything and we're all getting paid the same so this is kind of what we uh, can think about uh, free education and free um, medicine now other positive things uh, I can think of we had really uh, good quality of uh, groceries like uh, foodstuffs uh, what I mean we didn't have a lot of preservatives or other chemicals artificial flavors artificial colors uh, so we had really healthy food it was hard to buy groceries because we didn't have an abundance of stuff so if, for example you need to hit several grocery stores in your area to find potatoes so maybe one grocery store has potatoes then you need to go to another one to buy tomatoes and maybe none of them has bananas and as I said bananas maybe will be only once a year so uh, getting groceries was pretty hard but they were good quality because they didn't use a lot of chemicals for example our mayonnaise it was only sold in a little little jars like you can see here and I remember 
it has to be refrigerated right away even if you don't open it you need to refrigerate it and I think it says uh, it would its shelf life was like 21 days so three weeks shelf life when it's closed if you open uh, the jar it will last you like seven days max in the fridge that was real mayonnaise so it was going bad fast that's why it was always sold in little tiny jars but because it was not a lot of it uh, any not that no grocery grocery stores had the issue of you know while we're going bad we have to throw it away when you get mayonnaise it gets sold off right away because constant deficit that's the famous word in, in Soviet Union deficit because we always had shortage of everything you can except just basic staples like bread salt sugar flour everything else was like you need to catch it it's not like always available in grocery stores so of course you don't need to worry about any chemicals to extend the shelf life because the foods never stay too long on the shelves now i believe it started changing a lot and they add all these chemicals to make mayonnaise stay on the shelf for two years in a room temperature and don't get bad versus you have to keep it in the fridge for three weeks otherwise it will be bad so we had pretty good quality of groceries we just didn't have enough of them uh, another thing i can think of which, which was great is we didn't have any commercials like none it was beautiful not on the radio not on tv we had only three tv channels in kiev and at nine o'clock at p.m was the same program the news program called time programa vremia we had only cartoons twice a day for about 15 minutes but there was no commercials ever and my goodness i missed that it was beautiful i totally quit watching tv in the united states for that reason because i get sick and tired of seeing commercials every 15 minutes and actually i remember the very first time when i experienced a tv commercial is when uh probably 1993 or 4 they finally started translating uh i think it was a british channel uh super channel i think it was called so i'm all excited you know it's all in english uh, there's some news and then they show some uh, western uh, show uh, it was some movie so I'm watching that movie you know my English is kind of not that good so I'm all excited trying to learn English and enjoying the show and suddenly it stops and commercial starts and for me it was like the whole world just flipped upside down because that's like unheard of how can you stop a movie in the middle of it and just start showing some commercials you know like i could understand maybe okay before the news or after the news you know when you have a break here you just cut commercial cut a uh, show right in the most exciting part and you just start showing some stupid commercial about toothpaste or chewing gum or something else so i still remember that very first time when i saw commercial on tv and i was not a happy camper so those things were really nice and of course uh, Soviet government uh, wasn't uh, big on showing all this sensational news so we never knew bad news pretty much except like they will tell you oh there's you know airplane crashed in America but in, oh, uh, in Soviet Union we always had you know blue skies and nothing was happening wrong so even if a train crashes somewhere or plane uh, explodes media will never tell us about it there'll be some rumors going on uh, oh you know there's an airplane crashed or something happened and I just told you history about uh, my story about Chernobyl that we couldn't get any good information from government because they just don't like to share bad news but overall that was kind of nice thing so when I was a kid it was great because no commercials you know good food but looking back as adult it was probably super boring because most people you know to buy a car even if you have those huge amount of money we're talking oh, remember I was mentioning to buy a car it would be similar to what you guys have to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the little car nothing special you know uh, Chevy you have to pay 
similar money to what here will be two hundred fifty thousand dollars and wait about 10 years so it just was not much going on not a lot of entertainment and maybe that's why people were really bored and we had a really serious issue with drinking a lot of people were drinking just i guess because they were bored so yeah it was kind of you can think of a lot of positive things about soviet union it's like if you look at life in prison you can actually find some positive things too right because you have a guaranteed room so you have always roof above your head you can have a guaranteed meals so you'll never be hungry right so it's free food free lodging uh, you don't need to worry about tomorrow there's one thing that we uh, soviet people we were okay but you know you don't need to worry about tomorrow nobody gonna kick out your apartment you know they won't just fire you out of the factory because they decided to close it down because it was planned economy so factory needs to produce a hundred of this or hundred of that according to the government order there's no competition it's not like there's a factory in siberia that makes better product than we do it doesn't matter they tell us to make hundred of those in siberia they'll make it 200 of those so they won't close any factory so it was really safe boring and poor life uh, looking back from uh, my life now here in the united states and also you know with his analogy with prison you got to keep your mouth shut because you'll get in trouble with authorities in prison if you'll be you know acting and saying stuff you're not supposed to and same in soviet union people had to really watch their mouth you couldn't um, you know just to uh, say something bad about Leonid Brezhnev or whoever at the power uh, you can say bad stuff about the police and you can get in trouble and into the jail for saying stuff like that so we had this famous kitchen conversations when people gather in the kitchen and maybe drinking some alcohol and discussing life and then only quietly complain about the government but you couldn't just come out and say it in public I'm still having a hard time uh kind of comprehend how it's possible just to make fun of the president of the united states you know cartoons jokes it just i still can't get used to it because in soviet union oh goodness if you say something bad you'll be in bad bad trouble so this is things i can think of about good things that i remember about life in soviet union i hope you enjoy the show Thank you very much. До свидания. Goodbye.